God is good. And all the time. Good morning and welcome to the Church of Christ Congregational. It is nice to be with all of you this morning. Whether you are worshiping with us for the first time or for the first time in a while, whether you are here in our sanctuary or worshiping from the comforts of your home, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a lot of announcements this morning. First and foremost is the reminder that today is finally the day for our annual meeting. After worship this morning, we will hold our annual meeting where we will vote to adopt a budget of some sorts and discuss a number of things that will come before the congregation. I anticipate it will be about 30 minutes long, maybe a tad longer, it's hard to know, but I encourage all of you to remain if you are able. Only active members are eligible to vote, but all can attend, and I hope that you'll do so. If you are worshiping at home and would like to attend the meeting, a Zoom link was sent out in your weekly e-blast and is also posted on our church Facebook page. We hope to begin about 11, but it will all depend on how today's service goes and what time we end. Today we will be celebrating communion. If you did not bring your own elements, we will have some for you. Um, our little packs that we've been using were not delivered in time, so we have um, kind of pivoted and made adjustments for that, but um, have no fear if you did not remember to bring something for communion, we will make sure that you are covered when the time comes. There are still a number of stars, um, our stars of hope, that are left in the basket out on the table in the narthex, which is where you came in. For items that families in Goshen are looking for this year for Christmas. Um, they're mainly clothing items. Um, there might be some socks, but I guess those are clothing items too. If you have already taken a star, thank you. We ask that you return those gifts unwrapped with the star attached to church by next Sunday, or you can drop them by the office. If you have not taken a star yet and would like to, I think there's probably about 10 or so um, that are still available. So thank you in advance for your help. Food has started to come in for our um, Christmas dinner baskets that we will be putting together. I have been asked for a menu. What items would you like us to bring, Pastor Sarah? So I will make sure that that goes out in this week's e-blast. And if you would like to help provide food in that way, um, that would be terrific. Hmm, what to say next? The list is long. Our puppet show that is taking place on December 18th has a time change. It was originally going to be at 7.30. We have moved it up to 6 o'clock. So it will be at 6 o'clock. Tickets are available, $10 each or $40 per family. Tickets will be available after our annual meeting. There's a little room behind the sanctuary. Um, Darlene and Doyle will be back there selling tickets. There are also some really beautiful raffle baskets that you can purchase a chance to win. Um, those baskets will be at the puppet show, but we'll also have them here in church leading up to that. Um, tickets are reasonably priced, so you can take your chance this morning after our meeting. Just mark your calendars. More information will be coming, but we will be holding a longest night service on December 20th. It's a Monday evening at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Um, the service is typically for someone who is grieving something, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job. Um, they're carrying the grief of the fact that they're not happy during this time when everything is marked as you're supposed to be happy. Um, it's, a, it's a great service, a time for contemplation and quiet, and I've heard from several people who came because they had to come, you know, to read or to sing, and have said, I didn't think I needed this service, but it turns out I really did. So um, there will be more information coming out about that soon, and I'll also be looking for names that you would like me to send invitations to. 
maybe names of people who have lost loved ones the past year or experiencing some form of grief, um, I'd be happy to send out an invitation on their behalf. Christmas Eve is coming soon. We will have two services, one at 5 o'clock and one at 7.30. Our 7.30 service will be a lessons and carol service with communion. I think that that is all for now. No, it's not all. Light up a life. Light up a life. Thank you, Janet. Light up a life is an annual fundraiser that Goshen Community Care and Hospice does each year, and we have the honor of being its host this year. So today at 4.30 here in the sanctuary will be the Light Up a Life ceremony. You are all invited, after which we will go outside to the front yard and the really large tree on the corner will be lit and we will sing Silent Night. Um, you are all invited to come. If you have more questions about what that service is, I'm going to direct you to Janet, um, who is sitting right here in the front row. Um, she can give you the scoop if you would like more information on that. So today at 4.30 here in the sanctuary, it's a lovely ceremony. Is that it? Okay. I invite you all to take a deep breath and settle in for worship. Like the childhood game of musical chairs, we are convinced that there are not enough places at our table. And so we shrink the guest list just in case there is not enough, and we scramble to occupy the chairs first. And yet our sacred texts invite us to imagine and make real the gathering of all people to the table, robed in the garments of peace that comes with justice. This is what really matters. This is the fruit of what is right and what is good.
welcome today to welcome today to this time of preparation. Although we have been preparing for celebrations, we come seeking to prepare our hearts to receive God's good news. Get ready. The Lord is bringing to us hope and peace. How wonderful it is that the Lord is showering us with peace. Open your hearts and let your spirits be quieted. Be at peace with the Lord. Lord, prepare our lives and bring us peace. Amen. I invite you now to stand in body or in spirit as you are able. And join us in our opening hymn number 76 in the Christian Praise Hymnal, which is the Red Bound Book. seated. I invite you now to join together with me as we pray our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O oh Lord, darkness surrounds us like a cold stone tomb. Until your light bursts into our lives, 
like a clear, bright dawn. We cover our eyes. We are so unprepared for your coming. Your light blazes forth like a white hot fire, consuming all that it touches. How can we stand before you, Lord? The road that we thought was straight and wide is now exposed as a twisted, crooked path, blocked by a mountain of sin. Where can we turn? Who will guide us back to the way of peace, the way that leads to you? Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord is a merciful and compassionate Savior. We are forgiven because God rescues us from that fear and frees us from all that is wrong in the world. Like a refiner's fire, the Lord makes us shine with the brilliance of the purest gold and silver. The one who began this work in us seeks to bring it to completion. May the day of Christ find us flawless and without blame. I'd like to invite Doyle to come forward. He's going to share with us a moment for all of us, I suppose. I can bring it up if you want to. We'll Good morning to the children of this congregation, most of them who are viewing our service from cyberspace. We welcome everyone, whether you're here in person or at home or where you might be. Today is our second week of Advent. Joel, can you hold the mic closer? Thanks. Today is our second week in the season of Advent. Advent is the season when we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of Jesus. One way we can prepare is by making room in our lives for what matters most. Let's start with a call and response. And for any of our friends joining us for the first time today, we are so glad you're here. Here's how the call and response will go. I will say something and then you respond each time with the phrase, we make room for Jesus. And as you do that, you can rub a circle on your heart. So I will start off, make room for family, make room for friends. We make room for Jesus. Make way for a love that never ends. Make room for Jesus. Make room for others who need a hand. Make room for Jesus. We make room for Jesus. Make room to listen and understand. Make room for Jesus. Does anyone see the gift that we unwrapped last time? Do you remember it from last Sunday? This was turned upside down, and it was totally empty, and with our imagination, we filled it with important things. Last week, we explored hope. When we have hope, we can see a world of possibilities in a seemingly empty box. Today, this box is going to be something special, a table. But this is no ordinary table. This is a table of peace. Wonderful meals take place around the table of peace. Who would like to share what one of your favorite foods is? Maybe we'll prepare it. Step over here to the table. 
table of peace. Now at the table of peace, we serve others, not just ourselves. So here we are. I'm going to serve Pastor Sarah a nice some baklava and some rotan. Thanks, Doyle. All right, you're very welcome. That sounds delicious. <laughs> because at the table of peace, everyone is served. So if you're willing to make lasagna or baklava, that's great. And any other favorite foods you like to make today to serve others? Turkeys. Turkey. We like our tacos too. And tacos and turkey. Well, that covers a lot of people's taste, I think. <laughs> well, that sure is a lot, but there's always room at the table for more. And not only is there enough room for all the food we prepare, but there's room for people, all the people, through the peace of Though the peace of God, there's not one table for insiders and one for outsiders. There's not a table for regular people and for our kids. There's always room for the table at the table of peace for everyone. When we make room for, for everyone at the table, there is peace and on the outside because no one has but has to fight for a place. And there's peace on the inside because each person knows they belong. And I I think this ties in nicely with the, the, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence of what we hope for, assurance of what we do not see. So I ask you, Lord, to bless all the people who are at the table and all the people we would like to invite to the table of peace at this time of year in Advent. Thank you. I'm now going to invite Laura to come and read our scripture reading. Good morning. Um, this morning's uh, reading from the epistles, Philippians 1, chapter 3, verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verses 3 to 11. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think that this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Our second reading this morning is 
just not cooperating today. Our second reading this morning comes from the prophet Baruch, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you ever more the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look toward the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. Here ends our reading. One of our scripture readings this morning came from the prophet Baruch. You may have noticed that I didn't give you a page number in your pew Bible this morning to follow along, but that's because Baruch is not in our pew Bible. Baruch is a prophet, and the work that bears his name is not part of our traditional canon. Although you may be unfamiliar with Baruch's prophetical work, you have seen some of his other works before. Baruch is known as a scribe, and he earned this title because of his close working relationship with the prophet Jeremiah. Baruch wrote down the first two editions of Jeremiah's prophecies as Jeremiah dictated them. Together the two witnessed the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem. I find all of this fascinating, but what I couldn't help wondering as I prepared for today's service is why are we hearing from this prophet? today on the second Sunday of Advent. When it comes to the Advent season, many of us know what to expect. We often get stuck in our patterns of practice, the readings we do, the way we set up our nativities, the songs that we sing. It happens to all of us, pastors too. 
My friend Liz, who pastors a church in Michigan, was lamenting about not preaching on the words of John the Baptist. The theme for our Advent worship series is The Inn, Housing the Holy. Through this theme, we are invited to take a deeper look at how our churches, our homes, and our hearts can be places of hospitality and welcome. How we can make more space for the holy in our lives. We started last week with making more room, preparing enough room for the hope of Advent to grow in our hearts and in our lives hoping that it will multiply within us so that we can share it with others. This week, our readings point us to more opportunities to share. We are once again reminded to get rid of what we don't need. We are invited to do something different, to be ready for something that is yet to come. Baruch writes, Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. Meaning, take off what is weighing you down. Take off the things that don't bring you joy or don't bring you closer to God's presence in your life. The time of Advent is a time of preparation. Baruch, as one way of preparation, is inviting us to get dressed in the right kind of clothes. Something good is on the horizon, so we should all dress for the occasion. You may have noticed the title of today's worship is A Place at the Table, which feels fitting for the holiday season and for Communion Sunday. Baruch tells us that God is going to bring the people together, from the east and in the west. Or in other words, from near and far, God is going to bring the people together. We are dressed. We have made space. The children, the siblings have gathered coming from far and near. As Baruch writes, see your children gathered, rejoicing that God has remembered them. So logically, what comes next is the feast. From the earliest times when humans gathered in love and celebration, they ate. I started to think about all of the ways we gather around tables and what it means to have a place at the table. What does it mean for you to have a place at the table? I thought of the many times families and friends have gathered together and how tables that are sold to seat six can often somehow grow big enough for ten chairs. I thought about how a table with perfectly matching dishes and perfectly folded napkins can be made even more beautiful with the addition of folding chairs, mismatched silverware, and paper plates so that there is room for one more. How a full house is never really full. And I started thinking of ways we can extend tables with TV trays, coffee tables, creative placements of piano benches. Reverend Grace and Matthew reminds us of this. She says, we will eat together. That's the way we become family, is to eat together. Is we will have to pull up a chair to the table. And when a child is this beloved, it doesn't matter how small your table is. You will find a way to make room. When a child is beloved, it doesn't matter how small your table is. You will find a way to make room. God is opening the door to us to bring us together in hope that we will fill our tables and keep making room for another. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Room for all at the table. Images of our tables filling with more and more family and friends. Food aplenty to pass around, glasses and plates that never seem to empty. Being together over delicious food with stories, 
laughters and memories being made. Everybody scooting over just a little bit to make room for one more. But that really isn't how it works, at least not yet. There is at least one person in this world we'd rather not have at our tables, if we're honest. We aren't as good at having discussions as we would like. We don't listen like we wish we could. Sometimes we just shout over one another, and the winner is often the one who shouts the loudest. In the last month or so, I've seen more articles with titles like How to Avoid Conflict Over the Holidays. Is it okay not to invite the uncle no one likes? How to arrange the seating so you have fewer fights? There are more conversations around us and them than there are invitations to cross the lines. So as lovely as this mass invitation is, as lovely as this vision is, it somehow feels impossible to see to completion. spends a lot of time dealing with conflict and in fighting. But the part we heard this morning that Laura read to us isn't about that. It's about joy, the joy that we can share, and about remembering the more important things. Paul writes, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me. We don't have to get, to get, get along all of the time. And being together as God's beloved does not mean ignoring conflict. But solving conflict doesn't happen by shouting the loudest. We don't need to solve our problems before we can sit together at the table. But we need to come to the table in different clothes, as it were. What we have been doing just isn't sustainable, and it isn't working. We need to look at one another just a little differently. In order to do that, we need to slow down. We need to stop screaming. And we really need to look and listen to the people around us. God has set a wide and large table and has put a spot for each and every one of us without a single exception. So perhaps that is where we should start. Tiny bites, looking for common ground when we need it most. If God can invite everyone, we can spend an evening with that one uncle in just a little bit, we will gather together at the communion table. What are we bringing with us? What do you hope to take when you leave? Whatever you carry with you here at this table, you are welcome, just as you are. A breathing, flawed, whole and loved child of God. When you come to this table, when you come to God's table. I pray that you feel God's love and peace wash over you. I pray that you take that out with you into the world and see not only yourself as breathing, flawed, whole and loved children of God, but others as well. God's invitation isn't just to come to dinner, but to know that we are loved. Let us try to remind one another of that as often as we can. Amen.
and a hurting world. Let us breathe out this regret and breathe in the life-giving, forgiving spirit of God. Let us again breathe out with the peace of Christ. moment we open the doors of our lives to the call of the Spirit, inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine. Let us breathe out our fear and breathe in the courage of the Spirit of God and out again with the peace of Christ. moment we open the doors of this church, filling it with the compassion of Christ for all those who are struggling. We remember and pray for those who are suffering, suffering economic hardship and insecurity and basic needs, that abundance may be shared. We remember and pray for those who are suffering mentally, finding it difficult to cope, that paths may open and hope may return. We remember and pray for those who are suffering illness or injury, that healing may abound. We pray and remember for those who are suffering loneliness and isolation, that companionship and solace may arrive. And we pray and remember for those who are suffering from discrimination, fear, and violence, that they may know respect, respite, and safety. And we remember and pray for those we name aloud now. Anthony. Bridget. Andrew. Holy One, we ask that the advent of compassion be born in us, reside within us, move outward from us, to meet the needs of the world, making a house for the holy that is each and every child of God. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Some scholars have wondered if the inn Some scholars have wondered if the inn and its keepers were part of Joseph's family after all. He went back to his hometown for the census. Or perhaps Joseph's own family did not or could not make room for them, and they had to look elsewhere for a place to lay their head. As many of us know, family can be complicated. We'll never know the real circumstances of Joseph's family relations, but the story can help us gain a deeper compassion for what we do know. Too many people experience rejection, even from family. What if we endeavor to be family to those who need it most? 
to house the holy in ways we have not yet imagined. Let us remember all the ways this congregation supports and cares for one another. How have you been helped and supported by your faith family? How can you do that for someone else in the future? We are siblings in Christ. We are all imperfect, but we care for and support each other as best we can. If you would like to make a donation to help continue the care and support that we show for one another, you may do so by leaving your donation in the basket that is on the table behind the last pew here in the sanctuary. You may make a donation on our website, www.goshenchurch.com, or if you would like to mail in a donation, you can mail it to P.O. Box 216. Our invitation to communion this morning comes from Todd Jenkins' longer poem called Adventure. Adventure. And it's used with permission. The sacred unfolding of these four gifts, hope, peace, love, and joy, in their unvarnished glory, will flip our political and socioeconomic culture on its head, ushering in a new vision of community that's more flush with justice than we've ever dreamed, as it invites everyone to the table, which causes us to scramble for more chairs. Come to think of it, maybe searching for ways to extend the table is precisely what Advent is supposed to be about. At this time, Leslie and Lillian are going to walk around the sanctuary. If you did not bring communion and would like to partake, they will hand you um, a piece of element that you may use during this time. A reminder that our table is an open table, meaning that no matter who you are, what you have done or what you have not done, you are welcome at it. If you are worshiping at home, now is a good time to get your elements ready. We remember, we remember that Jesus was always about more chairs. For the friendly beasts, a cow whose manger fed him, the birds that never fall unloved, and the comforting animals of his 40 wilderness days. Jesus was always about more chairs. For the poor, lonely, grieving, and hungry, for the most vulnerable and rejected, even those deep and deserved regret. And we remember that Jesus sat in the chairs of anyone who welcomed him. He came to tables and asked for food, not to see the guest list. He knew how, multiply, how to multiply barley loaves, but also he knew how to grill fish. In this sacrament, on Advent's Day of Peace, we remember that the starlit child, protected by angels, grew up to offer bread and cup to a betrayer, a denier, a doubter, to several sleepers, many who fled because at the cross there were no angels. We remember that Jesus is in the bread and cup for those of us who know its blessing well and yet is still pulling out folding chairs so that more, even all, can come and sit and rest and eat. I invite you to place your hands over your elements. Emmanuel, God with us, in the hopes and fears of all our years, we come for comfort, for peace of mind, and peace on earth, for a blessing on our hands and the bread in them, on our lips and in the cup we lift to drink. 
May this bread and cup be all your holy life, that we may ponder in our hearts and pray in our community. Amen. The holy child of Bethlehem descends to us and is born in us this day. We hear Christmas angels with their great glad tidings to tell. Let us share our bread and let us drink deeply, for in every time we do so, Christ abides in us. Let us pray. Peace giver, blesser of tables shared and some tables turned over. We rise or roll from our places at this moment, most welcoming meal prepared anew to live Advent hospitality by becoming your chair, people, not leaders, but ushers and servers for the worldwide banquet of grace. Amen. For today's closing carol, we sing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, a carol written by Edmund Sears in one of the earliest social gospel hymns written. Sears was writing from Boston in the years just before the Civil War began, and this hymn emphasizes the message of the angels, peace on earth, goodwill to all. You can hear this clearly in a stanza that is missing from some hymnals, but with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's strain have rolled two thousand years of wrong. A man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. O oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. Let us remember that in true peace all can hear the love song of the angels. Let us offer our own love song now. I invite you to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, and join us in our closing hymn, number 93, in the Christian Praise Hymnal, which is the Red Bound Book.
I invite you now to join me in our common commission, which can be found in your bulletin. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no person evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Before I offer the benediction, I want to remind you that immediately after worship this morning will be our annual meeting. There will be a sign-up sheet that comes around. Um, I'm not quite sure who's going to get that started, but someone will send a sign-in sheet around. Um, please just sign your name so that we have record of who is here. Again, if you are not an official member of this church but wish to stay for the meeting, you are more than welcome to do so. And I think that is all. May God's door of welcome swing open in your heart and in your life. May Christ's humble first dwelling remind you of the plenty that you already know. And may the Spirit lead you into the possibility and hospitality that you can imagine, making room for the inn for all. May it be so for you. May it be so for us. May it be so for this church. Amen. Amen.